like an international agenda, a world agenda, it's showing an entire generation fully given in to this agenda psychologically. And that's what. Welcome to my watchtower. Come have a view with me. Watch me talk, talk. I like you with chalk. Tell the truth, truth. Leaders sold and bought. Persecute, cute. I hear my father call it. Since salute to all the soldiers fall. Shalom and let's get it on. So we can see what's going on inside this watchtower. Welcome to the walk. We get straight into it. So as the title reads, the 28th Amendment, or the 28th Amendment, Conspiracy for Correction. Let's go ahead and check this out here. It says, Serbia passes new tool control laws after mass school toolings in May. It says 16 people were deleted in two fatal mass toolings in Serbia. Tens of thousands demand tighter tool controls and reorientation of society away from violence. What we're looking for here is the context. It's exactly what happened. This is the circumstances, conditions. We had two major events that involved uh, projectile tools. These events triggered something that has been a goal for the last two decades in this country right here in the United States of America, or some people know as the United States of Babylon. The same outcome that they have been striving for, our politicians, after event after event, go all the way back to 2008, event after event, they come on the television and they say, we have to do something. We have to Every do something. Every time I think about those And they, they, when they really was trying to get to the people's hearts, when it was really trying to get to the people's hearts, they say, do it for the kids. Well, that's what happened in Serbia. That's exactly what happened in Serbia here. Okay, so check this out. They have a lot of guns in this country, the third most per capita after the United States and Yemen, but they'd never been used like this before. On May 3rd, a 13 year old boy, for reasons still unclear, stormed into his school with two of his father's guns and a hit list and killed eight classmates. The next day, a man in So did y'all hear that? An event that targeted children. And it turned into this type of response, you'll see. His 20s with a history of violence opened fire in a village, killing eight more. But then came more than thoughts and prayers. Okay, do you hear the language they're using? Do you hear the language they're using? More than thoughts and prayers. See, this is not a domestic agenda that's taking place in the United States. Every time events happen and they, they begin to push certain types of legislation. This is an international agenda. Rage became action. Tens of thousands demanded not just tighter gun controls, but a reorientation of society away from violence. A, a reorientation of society away from violence. Reaction against armed rage. I think a lot of us have just had enough. Uh, and now it's a make or break moment. Zarko Svechik's nine-year-old daughter, Zora, was in the school when the 13-year-old boy went on a killing spree. What would you say to Americans? Yeah. What would you say to Americans? What would you say to Americans? See how this is being geared towards Americans. And there's a thing called the U.S. Constitution. And then you got all the U.S. history has been taught in school that fully, you know, ideo ideologically supports what's in the Constitution. But that's not the global agenda. So we're dealing with a global agenda here. And a lot of these news articles, even ones from last year that go back and talk about the mass confiscation and, and grab they had in Australia years ago, or the one they had in Brazil. There's articles that came out last year when they were in a wave of pushing this agenda. And it's always like, how come America can't learn from this other country? America needs to learn from this other country. This is the circum circumstances and conditions that we're dealing with when we see things like this in the media. I don't know why this didn't get more coverage. You know, it went out there, but people are probably more looking at what's going on in Eastern Europe and Asia. We've been through this and then see no change. I would say to them, you know, um, safeguard your democracy um, if you still have it and uh, mobilize and uh, act. Within weeks of the shootings here, new laws were introduced and old ones enforced. Now all existing gun permits are under review. All sales of new guns of any type are banned for two years. Gun owners must submit to in-person psychological and background checks. And owning an illegal gun is punishable by up to 15 years in prison. Many. 
Look at Serbs whoa, are look at that. Being armed isn't worth the risk or hassle and are turning in their guns voluntarily. There's a lot. Look at that. Look at that. Voluntary. Do you see what can be done to people psychologically? And we talked about this in the last video I put out. The power of psychological warfare. Getting people to do what you want them to do without force. But getting them to believe that they are doing something that is going to protect themselves or better their own society. How many people got got with that just, what, two or three years ago, 2020? Do you know how many headlines and stuff getting suppressed and people putting out information showing the result? and the after effects of some of these things that people took upon themselves to do because they were afraid and they were in fear. They did these things because it was supposed to better society. Do you, do you get the picture now? That's the same case with this here, you know, this agenda. You best believe ain't nothing good coming out of this. And they keep mentioning America in these articles and in these situations. And if you notice some of the, the, the thing, the points they had, look at this. We've seen some of this stuff, but this right here, submitting person, psychological and background check we've seen that in some of the legislation they've tried to put forward we've seen them trying to extend the nick system they call it a universal background check something we've seen them doing this thing and what they're doing right now is if you have a certain type of projectile tool that was once considered legal and sold in stores they're letting a government agency called the atf dictate and say you are now in position of something that we consider illegal, even though it wasn't it wasn't illegal. And it's turning people and can turn people who have had this into criminals and, and they would they could face jail time, just like this situation they got going over here. Now, this man said people were voluntarily turning this stuff in, thinking that they're, they're doing what's best for the society, or in fear of their own government because they don't want to end up with 15, 15 years in jail or prison. Wow. Okay, so let's move to the next thing. That is the context. This is the circumstances, circumstances and conditions that we're dealing with. And that's over there in Serbia. But we're dealing with it right here in the United States. It just ain't got this far. So let's pull this up. June 8th, 2023, California Governor Gavin Newsom proposes 28th Amendment to the Constitution to combat, combat tool violence. It says the amendment would raise the minimum age purchase for a tool from 18 to 21. Mandate universal backgrounds, very similar to what they got going in uh, Serbia. Institute reasonable waiting period for all tool purchases and bar civilians from purchasing assault tools according to the statement from the governor's office. Man, 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 man. God. See, th th this is an international agenda, and they want everybody on board. Let's look at this man. Let's look at what this man got to say. What the hell is going on? But it was said, and it's said all the time, only in America. Now, listen here. You just seen what's, what political party he's affiliated with and what state he's from, California. And he's sitting here talking about only in America, only in America, only in America do we allow this, only in America. Look what this go well, look what's going on. This man state, uh, California, New York, but specifically in California. Look at the looting and the dis pro property destruction and the and the mob mentality as it pertains to stealing and, and running into people's property. Look what this man is for him and those other politicians there, look what they are facilitating in that state. And I would say only in America, because there's some places if you get to stealing stuff, they'll cut your hands off, okay? So he acts like he's shocked about Americans having certain rights to themselves. But what about what, about what he's allowing to go on the state, him and all those other politicians in that particular uh, political party he's affiliated with? only in America. Number one in gun ownership, number one in gun deaths. It's not even complicated. And guess what? This happened on our watch. Society becomes how we <laughs> What about all that other stuff that's going on on those politicians' watch in uh, California and these other liberal states and in Oregon, 
Portland, Oregon, all this. What about all this stuff where, where, where these these corporations, these big stores, these store chains, they, they're closing down their stores and taking all kinds of other measures and using different levels of technology to keep people from just raiding their stores. What what about, what what are they, they're allowing that to happen on the watch, but they're sitting here talking about pushing forward legislation that is going to ultimately take away constitutional rights from Americans and severely limit Americans rights to protect themselves. And this will affect anybody living on this soil. We've allowed this to happen. I got no ideological opposition to someone owning a gun responsibly. But what the hell is wrong with us that we allow these weapons of war and large capacity clips out on the streets and sidewalks? Why have we allowed this culture let me tell you something, man. There's a whole lot of corruption in this country. And it's, it's not in one place. And he's talking about things on the street, you know, on the sidewalks. What about the underground market? Why do these politicians want law-abiding citizens to believe that criminals follow laws? He's talking about the streets and sidewalks. Why does he not address, why are they going after the law about, you know why they're going after the law-abiding citizens. This is the uh, circumstances and conditions we're dealing with. Now, look, I've had enough of this because it, it kind of bothers me, it really does. It's stupid. And if you got eyes to see, you, you can clearly see what is going on. We're gonna get this clown off the screen. Now that we got the context, let's get to the clarity, man. You see this? Do you see this? Look at this. This right here takes me back to years ago when I lived in a particular state, the state of Colorado, and I would often have to go to the airport when I lived in that state. I went there a good amount of times while living there for different reasons and every time i went in the airport they had murals murals and these murals i could never let go i mean i just stand there in front of them forever and just stare at them because i knew these were not normal murals this is one of them i won't say this one stood out the most to me because there's another one that definitely stood out to me more than this one but this one fits the context are we talking about and this one gives the clarity of why we're seeing what we're seeing in serbia why we've seen what we've seen in the news articles coming talking about the history of australia with their confiscations and, and rollout of mass tool control brazil as well and why they're using these articles within the last three years pushing this agenda saying well if brazil did this and australia did this you can do it too this mural right here shows it shows and says it all and we're seeing it happen before our eyes the United States of America is not going out like that. The, the United States of America is not going out easily, okay? So look at this. Look at all these countries. You see the flags? Look at all these countries. What did they have? Swords. In the scripture, they did not have projectile tools like we do today. They had swords. And Messiah spoke on this. So what we see in these this mural are these people taking their flags, representing their country, and they're laying down their swords to be br brought here so they can be destroyed. But one thing you need to notice about this mural is that these people in this mural, they are not adults. Most of these people in this mural, these are children. So this mural is not only showing the disarmament of countries internationally, like an international agenda, a world agenda, it's showing an entire generation fully giving in to this agenda psychologically. And that's what we saw in Serbia. You had people voluntarily turning this stuff in, but yeah, a lot of people probably did this said, no, we're not doing that. But now they're criminalized. I want you to notice something too about this. Not only you see kids, they're showing kids, a certain generation that has been programmed to think this way, doing this very thing, laying down their ability to protect themselves. Look at this symbol right here. This is the sign of a covenant, according to the scripture. This is a sign from the Most High God, the Most High Yah. But look how they're using it today to brainwash a generation. Nasty and perverted books in children's schools in some of these crazy states. Like the, like that crazy state that that man, this 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 uh, legislation, this 28th Amendment is trying to come from. This is the kind of crap they support, the brainwashing of children. And that's exactly what has happened with these children in this mural. They have been programmed. Look at this mess right here. Boy, 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 you see the United States flag? Look at that. I think that boy got on like a boy scout suit man do you know how much crazy stuff is behind them people and them organizations yo you start getting looking up stuff like the boy lovers associations and all this weird man listen 
This this they have taken the sign of a covenant, which this is an abomination to take this sign and turn it into what they have turned it into. But they are not going for children's minds for no reason. It's not only for perverted reasons when it comes to their bodies and how they think concerning their bodies, but it's also for this mess right here that we're seeing on this mural. And we're seeing it live and in living color. So that's the clarity. Now the continuity is this. History shows that when a society or a population within a nation is no longer to protect themselves, very bad things happen, very bad things happen. We're talking about genocide. This happened in Hitler's World War II, Germany. This happened in China with Mao Zedong. There's so many situations in history where when people had their, uh, they were not able to defend themselves. Even South Korea, a place called Kwangju, the government sent troops down there and they just started mowing down mowing down students, college students, because the college students were protesting and saying they were not with the way the government was doing things. They sent them soldiers down there and it caused a rebellion. It caused a rebellion. And these people eventually broke into an armory and began to fight and resist the government. They, they, didn't, they weren't able to be successful, but that's how bad it got. And it's because those people were not able to protect themselves. History shows that when a people become disarmed, it was for a purpose. And that purpose is subjugation and control. That purpose also is annihilation sometimes, especially if those people are not in agreement with what the government or whoever's in power is trying to do. They're the first people to go when they're not able to protect themselves. So let me ask you this. Why do you think this agenda is being pushed so hard, this 28th Amendment? Why are we seeing this internationally? Why? Here, I'll tell you why here. This is gonna be the hardest nation, I mean the hardest nation to convince of this mess. This is gonna be the hardest nation to convince because the history, this nation, mm, 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 mm. this nation has been a war machine for the principalities, powers and rulers of darkness and spiritual wickedness in high places. For a long time, it's been a war machine, military industrial complex to the fullest. That's why this nation has the types of laws that it has. Because it's this nation, it was already in the mindset of children to be able to become soldiers, to, to, to bear arms. Why? Because it was a part of the culture. But that was done by design. But now that they're done with the American experiment and they are closing this thing down and moving in the world into the international agenda, they don't see a need for Americans to have that mindset and that culture. So they're brainwashing an entire generation eventually, <clears throat> and I guess less chaotically, disarm Americans. And it's already happening. We just ain't seen the full physical manifestation of it yet, but it's happening. There's five home invaders. All of them don't have weapons. They're ready to throw down with their fists against your husband. Would you prefer he has his, his hands or a gun? Hands. You don't want. He's gonna get the shit. I don't want them shit. dying he's if they're just the coming into my house. What if? What if after they kill him, they want to you? Wouldn't you want him to have a gun in that instance? Whoa! I didn't. Know, <laughs> I didn't think they were gonna kill him. Well, I mean, they're home invaders. If he's gonna that fight them, it, just because you invade someone's home doesn't mean you're gonna <laughs> kill them. Please look, niggas be wild. Americans are currently divided over the use of this sign of the covenant and how it's being used to brainwash children. And America is currently divided, the divided states of America, over who is supposed to have swords, what kind of swords, while some people believe nobody should, and others believe everybody should. These are the major divisions in our country. So we've been through the context, the clarity, and the continuity even of how in history our own domestic events and these politicians will get up and they say, think about the kids, do it for the kids. You're not protecting kids. You need, all need to do this to protect the kids. Man, they're always going to try to manipulate. It's witchcraft. I'm going to tell you something else that's crazy about it. They're pushing this mess so hard right now while the United States government and military is involved in international warfare. Meaning we over there in that country covertly. And they, 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 these folks that we, you know, going head to head with, our government, those folks over here covertly as well. People should be able to protect themselves. And I don't believe that a politician from a state that's letting people just do whatever they want and demonize their they law enforcement and everything else that's facilitating chaos and civil unrest. I don't think that kind of person should be passing no type of legislation 
or, or suggesting any type of legislation such as this. Because there's people in these other states that are not going for this. People, they're not finna lay down their right to protect themselves. So, now we've gone through context, clarity, and continuity. Let's get to, last but not least, Christ. How can we be Christ-minded knowing this information? I'm going to tell you something. Messiah spoke to his disciples concerning the sword and the use of the sword. Say, he that live by sword shall perish by the sword. But he also told his disciples when he sent them out on their own for real. Not to test when he sent them out with nothing. So they could develop in faith. Now, when he sent them, sent them. And he said, you uh, go sell your cloak for two swords. Why? Because he knew the journey. The most I know. Once oh I know the world evil. That's why in the, father, in the Lord's prayer, say, it's a like, father's prayer says, deliver us from all evil. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. Father. Man, come on. We have to love our neighbors. We have to love the most high first. He's first. Seek ye first the kingdom of Yah. All other things shall be added. You know, if any man come after me, this is what Messiah said. If any man will follow after me, let him first deny himself, take up his cross, and then follow me. How do we follow Messiah today? By the, the, the leading of the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh. You know, so the kingdom first. Loving Yah with all our heart mind soul will all that the shema okay but then we have to we have to love our neighbors as ourselves yes there are big disagreements going on with this stuff and you're not going to have you, you definitely there's, there's divisions in this nation and it's supposed to be because prophecy is manifesting the ushering in the reign of the antichrist and he has a global agenda, according to the book of Revelations. So they need this to take place. You dig? Okay. That don't mean we just supposed to willingly go with it. Okay. But we got to love our neighbors as ourselves. We can't allow certain things to get us so riled up that we are ready to live by the sword, do things irrationally. No, the sword has a purpose. The book of Ecclesiastes, it says there's a time to delete and there's a time to heal. Okay. You see that fly flying around here? If I had a fly's water, he would get deleted because he served no purpose in here. Okay. What a fly spread? Disease. Built. Everything has a purpose. We're supposed to live by the spirit of the Most High Yah. Live and flow in the spirit of the Most High Yah. Because He gives us the strength to keep the commandments of the Most High Yah. He gives us the urge to get in the Word and study and, and learn the commandments and the words of the Most High Yah. So we know the will of the Father. We know the will of our Father. But we can't love our neighbor if the love of Messiah is not within us. So we have to keep Christ's mindedness when dealing with all this information. This is real stuff. These divisions are real. And we're going to see even more of a wedge driven in this nation. Come on now. It happened to Israel. Come on. You have Benjamin, uh, Judah, and Levi uh, were the southern kingdom. And then the rest of the tribes became the northern kingdom. So yeah, Yehuda and Israel and Yasharel split. This this has happened before. And it's happening in this nation. I'm not saying this nation is Israel. No. I'm saying this is this this has happened throughout history. But it's happened, and you can clearly see it in the scripture in the Bible. The 
but the truth does not change. We're supposed to love the most high God first. Seek ye first his kingdom first. Love him with all our heart, mind, soul, strength, will. And love our neighbors as ourselves. So you remember that when digesting this information. You remember that when looking at people who do not agree with you about certain things and certain agendas, political, you, you, you remember that. You have to develop a mentality of Yahshua. And I ain't talking about Yahushua Hamashir, the Christ. No, I'm talking about Yahshua, the conqueror, son of Nun, or Nun. I'm talking about the Moses or Moshe's predecessor. He said, as for me and my house, we shall serve Yah. We will serve Yahuwah. That's the mentality you have to develop. Especially when they start coming with these mass agendas and putting social pressures on people and persecuting people. You have to say, for me and my house, we're going to serve Yahuwah. We're going to serve Yah. Hallelujah. Glory to the most high God. Yeah, we pay attention to what's going on around us with others. But that don't mean we're allowed to dictate what's going on in this house. I'm out here. Love y'all. Shalom.